hi to uh, our friends out there who traveled over from Ghana, all the businesses that came over last night and this morning. We appreciate very much uh, your companies, representing your companies and being here today. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, uh, first, with the limit of time, I'm not going to talk about too much about Ghana's background, but I would want to mention uh, um, just a couple uh, quick things. Uh, Joshua had mentioned earlier uh, in general about West Africa. Um, what he described really pertains to Ghana as well. But not only Ghana does our office cover, we also cover Cote d'Ivoire, Togo, uh, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. However, our main focus is really on Ghana because that's where, at this point in time anyway, most of the trade is happening there, as well as a little bit uh, in Cote d'Ivoire. But uh, um, really, Ghana, uh, drilling down into Ghana a little bit, uh, it's really one of the most stable, politically stable countries uh, in West Africa, alongside Senegal. And uh, GDP um, did slow down in Ghana uh, to, to about 2.3.6% uh, last year, but it's really expected to rebound uh, this year, and they're looking uh, somewhere around 6% uh, uh, GDP um, by the time uh, 2017 comes to an end. <clears throat> but I think what I'm going to do is uh, maybe start out here just focusing a little bit about uh, uh, what our office does and what opportunities are out there and how we can connect with you all here in the audience today. Um, you know, our job is really twofold at our FAS office. Uh, one is on the marketing side uh, to promote uh, um, um, uh, food and beverage products and, and agricultural products in Ghana and the surrounding West African countries as well as enhance food security, and we do that through our, uh, um, our various uh, um, USDA trade capacity building programs. But, uh, you know, what we do, we, we work to reduce trade barriers. We identify opportunities, and we partner with many of you folks out here, and we promote. We can, it can be, we can be exporting uh, into Ghana from the U.S., it could be seeds, it could be uh, maize seeds uh, to animal genetics, or to our finest USDA certified beef, poultry, or fine wines from California. But uh, so, you know, we do have uh, results. And as you can see from the, the slides that are up there, uh, in 2016, we uh, exported uh, about uh, 75 to $80 million worth of agricultural food and agricultural products to Ghana. Um, um, but the, the, the real story here is uh, we do have our uh, um, uh, trade numbers out for the first, first six months of 2017. And uh, our numbers, they're, they're way up. They're up over 70% from the same time period, uh, 2016. Meanwhile, uh, Ghana's exports to the U.S. also expanded. They're up over 20% from the same period last year. Uh, of course, cocoa uh, trade is the primary driver uh, to this increase, uh, though small increases uh, were also seen in the exports of cashews, fruit juice, and vegetables. And that mir mirrors Cote d'Ivoire as well. Most of the exports to the U.S. is cocoa or cocoa powder. So, uh, you know, that's really uh, some good news stories for us. So those are products that are coming in. I'd also just uh, point out on the next slide, please, that, uh, um, again, looking at the first six months of 2017, poultry remains strong. Um, uh, I wouldn't say it's stagnant, but it's, um, it's uh, I would say it's steady. It's down just a tad, but uh, I think it'll bump up a little bit more uh, before the end of the year. The year-to-year -year increases uh, um, are primarily, primarily driven by uh, a notable return to the U.S. wheat, to the Ghanaian market as well as small but measurable increases across exports of soybean meal, uh, fish, beef, dairy, and uh, prepared foods. So uh, we do really have a pretty good story to tell and uh, working um, hand in hand with our uh, cooperator groups and companies, we wanna continue this uh, uh, effort to, uh, to increase U.S. agricultural exports and to help the countries uh, uh, within the West African region to be, become more self-sufficient. I will just mention a couple opportunities here. Uh, we, uh, I won't steal the thunder of, of uh, some of our friends in the audience. Uh, I know I think Yardin, Samuel from Yardin is speaking tomorrow, as well as the American Soybean Association. But on proteins and protein ingredients, 
opportunities in the Ghana are, are really uh, are looking pretty, pretty good. You know, interest in imports of value-added U.S. products that, uh, in, that can undergo uh, further value uh, um, addition in Ghana uh, to benefit both the U.S. and the local industries. That's really taking hold. And again, uh, we have a, a quality samples programs that I think American Soybean Association wish we'll talk about uh, maybe later, where we're bringing in various soy flour blends uh, um, for value addition. We also um, uh, look at the, uh, um, on the uh, uh, retail side and the HRI sector. Uh, these are areas that are in fact growing in Ghana. Uh, we do have uh, open, there's new malls opening up uh, both in Accra and Kumasi uh, in, in central Ghana, just opened up the largest mall in the entire country. Uh, again, these are niche markets, but uh, these malls, just like anywhere in the world, uh, they have food courts, they're using food ingredients. We have U.S. franchises, franchises from all over the world, uh, and they are, in fact, using food ingredients. From, uh, so there's opportunities there as well. Uh, uh, seafood, if you notice seafood up there, that's, uh, um, again, it's really, uh, it's, it's kind of, the, the, I guess, the lower end is hack. It's the, uh, um, most of that, what's coming into Ghana. Uh, but there's also some scallops and fish oil coming in as well. Uh, dairy, uh, that's mostly powdered milk um, or used for uh, frozen yogurt. We have uh, chains opening up. Uh, a Pinkberry just opened up about two weeks ago. Uh, there's other franchises, frozen yogurt chains opening up throughout Ghana. So again, I would just say that uh, modern retail, the HRI sector, there's definitely opportunities there as well. Uh, finally, just uh, a, a moment on, on value chains. Uh, you know, in Ghana, we're working uh, on the value chains. You know, we're trying to um, make the country uh, uh, become and remain competitive, you know, really in the local, the regional, and the international markets. You know, we're doing, we're trying to develop this through a, a comprehensive, you know, what we call an outgrower uh, business model that provides uh, technical business and financial services uh, you know throughout the value chain you know we identify places you know within a particular value chain and then we uh, you know we do interventions to help uh, the economy the social and uh, the commercial with, and commercial incentives so you know just a lot of different things going on in, in Ghana and the surrounding area but uh, um, you know if you want to talk more uh, about this later I definitely uh, am around to uh, to, uh, to answer any questions, but I think in the, in the interest of time, I'll just keep moving on. Thank you. Thank you.